Kevin. Hey, Earl. Great to see you as always. Absolutely, my friend. Another great Monday, even though a little turmoilous, you know, in the whole real estate world. But it's a, yeah. it's an exciting time in real estate. Whether you're a yeah. buyer, whether you're a seller, or if you aren't in the business. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But you know, like like we talked about earlier, you know, for, for guys like us, you know, who, who always give great value to our clients, um, on no matter what side of the table that, that they're on, um, I believe it'll always be a place, you know, you know for us in this industry. So, you know, absolutely, um, absolutely. So, how's the market doing these days? Market is actually great. Inventory is increasing each day. Um, you're getting more homes on the market, more existing homes, so it's much more affordable homes, as well as new construction. So, you kind of got a good mixture of both right now. Um, especially heading into the spring market nationally and locally, we're seeing increases. Um, and, you know, with the weather being nice, people are being able to get out more and kind of tour more neighborhoods and kind of see what's going on. Um, you know, which leads us kind of into, you know, what we were talking about earlier as well. And, and that's talking about some of the out of pocket costs that our home buyers will be faced with uh, with buying a home in 2024 market. And in a lot of cases, it's not as bad as you would think. There's a lot of myths out there where people think they need a 20% down payment, that there's all of these costs, but it can be very affordable. And there's some grants, there's some assistance, the seller can even help out. You know, so a home purchase can be much more affordable than many folks realize. Yeah, that's and 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 that's true. And you know, I think some of the times the biggest the biggest problem from some people, like you said, is the pre stigmas of the oh, we need ten, we need twenty percent down um, type of thing that everyone heard. You know, when I was coming up, you, you know, but um, a lot of times just knowing exactly what fees, you know, like which we'll discuss with you guys today, um, some of the fees out of pocket that they'll actually be looking at instead of kind of going into everything blind and um, not really knowing what to expect. So on your side, uh, like what would someone expect? I can kind of talk about on the mortgage side and down payments and stuff. But before they get to me, what are some of the out-of-pocket costs they might face? Some of the initial costs that, they, that you're going to look at buying a home in the market today or any at any particular time is earnest money deposit. That earnest money deposit is a good faith down payment. You consider it sort of like a security deposit if you're renting an apartment or a townhome or something like that, um, which generally, I mean, it can be as high as 1% of the value. But the general rule of thumb that we tend to follow is any if a house is priced under $250,000, $500 to $1,000 money deposit is acceptable. Anything north of $250,000 up to about a million, you kind of want to stay around the $1,500 to $2,000, you know, down payment mark um, as far as earnest money, you know, earnest money goes. And from upward there, then it can be negotiated, you know, however, you know, you and the seller, you know, decide. And if you're buying a million dollar house, you're probably not worried about a couple thousand dollar deposit on the purchase contract. Yeah, no, that, that that's going to be the least of your worries. And and if it is a major worry, then there's going to be a bigger problem coming down the line when it turns to mortgage time, you know? So, yes, exactly. Uh, and then uh, home inspection, uh, we don't get involved in that, but that's something you help folks out with, right? Or at least get them connected, make recommendations, et cetera. Absolutely. Yeah. With home inspection, what, what I tend to like to do is I like to get with my buyers and see first if they have someone that they know of, you know, already. But if not, I usually like to give them two or three good recommendations. Um, you, you know, I, I do have my sometimes and I hate to say this, but um, I do have my personal favorites, guys that I know are going to go in there, do what they're supposed to do. Um, they're going to give you the good, the bad, the ugly, and then let people make the best decisions, you know, for, you know, for themselves. Um, and, but they're not also going to go in there and, and, and scare people half to death, you, you know, on, on things that, you know, that really don't make a major difference, you, you know, like the color of a, a room, you know, particular paint in a room is not going to make a difference, you know, in the actual overall home evaluation. Um, yeah, but exactly. typical, 
But typical costs in that price range between these days, I think they range between $350 all the way up if you get the max package, about $700. Um, so between $350 and $700 is where I would kind of keep an open mind. And it's just based upon the type of stuff that they want, whether they, you know, they want extensive warranty information for all the appliances or you, you, you know, um, in certain areas like Richmond, where they do um, the radon testing, you know, for, you know, in the ground and things like that um, for those levels. Um, but yeah, so generally between $350, $700 max is what you look at out of pocket with your home inspection. Yeah, and that's, uh, that varies a bit too on the size of the home, I think, doesn't it? It does. Square footage is a huge thing. If it's a smaller home, of course, it's going to be less. If you're looking upwards of, 2100 2200 square foot or above then that's when you get closer to the higher range of that spectrum cool cool yeah yeah it's definitely worth it a small investment that can save you a ton of money and potential problems later absolutely those home inspections are so thorough they go through stuff that you want to know and stuff you don't care about knowing but yep. you know every bit of it you, you know each detail about every room each location in, in the home um you have a full 50 to 60 page report. Yeah, knowledge is definitely power. And then on the mortgage side, cost up front aren't that significant. Uh, the only thing most mortgage companies collect up front is once you are under contract, the appraisal fee. Uh, and that is just a pass through expense that goes to the real estate appraiser who will go out, estimate the current market value of the home based on other recent comparable sales in the neighborhood, adjusting for square footage, room count, et cetera, and make sure to note if the home is in acceptable condition for the mortgage program. They don't go into as much detail as a home inspector by far. You know, they're gonna note anything obvious they see. Like if you're in the kitchen and you see sun coming in and there's not a skylight there, they're gonna note that. You know, so it's just going to really be the obvious things uh, that typically runs anywhere from five to six hundred dollars is the average. And the reason we have to collect it up front is the appraisers want to be paid up front. So used to be years and years ago, uh, you know, folks would not necessarily have to pay the appraisal up front. But then the appraiser goes out, says, mm, house isn't worth what you're paying for it. Or, oh, there's some condition issues and the deal falls through. They did their job. They protected the buyer and then they don't get paid because they didn't close. Right, uh, so right. The appraisers are like, hey, we want to be paid. Uh, we're going to do our work. We're providing the report. We're doing all this regardless of whether or not the home closes, just like your home inspector. Now, your home inspector is out there as your advocate. If they find something, they will say something. You don't want them to keep it quiet. Be like, oh, I'm not going to say anything about this condition issue because I want this loan to close so I get paid. You know, right. so you're protecting yourself by paying your home inspector and your appraiser up front. So, Absolutely. yeah, that's really the only upfront cost on the mortgage side. The other costs we absorb, like your credit reports and that type of thing. Uh, then at closing, you would have your down payment for the mortgage that you select. Uh, there are low down payment mortgages, three and a half, five percent of the purchase price. There's no down payment mortgages through VA, through the uh, USDA, U.S. Department of Agriculture. There's grants for down payment. So the mortgage programs that do require a down payment, there's grants available, especially for first time buyers even for helping with closing costs. Closing costs are the cost to complete the closing on your purchase. Uh, you have closing costs whether or not you get a mortgage. You know, some of the things you would have regardless would be your closing company, a real estate attorney or title company that does your clo closing, make sure you're getting free and clear title. You have to pay taxes on the closing. Your locality, your count, city, your county, your state, uh, everybody's got their hand out. Of course, uh, Uncle Sam is going to make sure that he gets his. Uh, and of course, Always. There are, Always. absolutely, there are some on the mortgage side. Uh, we mentioned the appraisal. Uh, there's typically some sort of processing underwriting charge to help cover our upfront costs. 
Uh, you don't necessarily have to pay your loan officer anything. You know, that's uh, that comes through the mortgage company as they receive payments and interest over time. That's how we make our money. You know, so any closing costs on the mortgage side is just covering some of the more significant upfront costs. Uh, typically, closing costs average 3% of the purchase price, closing costs and prepaids uh, in that prepaids are additional things due at closing, like your homeowner's insurance, your first year's premium, setting up your escrows for taxes and insurance. You pick it, uh, but it's just part of the costs. Real estate taxes, the the yearly, uh, you know, we put a little bit in escrow for that. You know, so you're looking in general on average about 3%. As you get to the lower price points, some of the costs are fixed. So you might be looking at, you know, on a $200,000 house, it might be 4% because, you know, your appraisal is going to be the same price, whether it's a $200,000 house or an $800,000 house. You know, so some of the costs are fixed, but, you know, it's an average of 3%, can be as low as 2 can be as much as 4% or so. You know, so those generally are the responsibility of the buyer, but you can ask the seller to pay some or all of those. So if money's tight in your negotiations, work with your buyer's agent and say, hey, seller, how about you cover 3% of my closing costs or whatever it is that you can negotiate. So you can make it very, very affordable on the purchase. Don't get scared away by thinking you don't have cash. Talk to Earl talk to Kevin and we can come up with a plan and we can go out there and be your advocate to help you find grants, willing sellers, whatever it takes to get you into your home. Absolutely. That's, that's one of the main things that we do, Kevin and I, you know, we, we definitely plan these strategy sessions, you know, with all buyers and sit down and help them walk through the process. Um, you know, we, we're, we're kind of like a special ops team, <laughs> you, you know, when it, when it comes to getting the deal done and, you know, getting homeowners in the home that they want, and, you know, and within a reasonable, you know, within a reasonable cost for definitely, definitely for sure. And I, I just wanted to touch on one thing, too. And that was the um, just to go back to the appraisal to me. And one thing that I explained to all buyers is that your appraisal is almost like an extra fail safe at the end. So not only is the bank there to make sure that, you know, the money that they're loaning, protecting their investment, but they're making sure that you're not, you know, overpaying for something that may not technically be worth it. Um, you know, by the actual price. So yeah, it you know, it's it, that costs a little bit of money, but that appraisal is that extra fail safe near the end of the deal that makes you feel more, you know, comfortable going into closing. Yeah, absolutely. Just making sure that you're getting value for your money. And as yeah. much as we'd love to say we're doing that for the best interest of our buyers and clients because we love them so much, we're protecting <laughs> our interests. You know, we're making yep. sure if we are lending money, in that there's the actual value in the collateral in the property absolutely absolutely yeah Sounds man so good. don't be scared you can buy it is affordable uh and we can help you work through that process you can talk to kevin loanswithkevin.com and how do they find earl and they can contact me directly at 757-871-4167 or at my website earl.belltowerteam.com Sweet. Until next time. All right. Have a good one, Kevin. Thank you. You too, sir.